I know, this title is a very big claim. Animaniacs is a fun cartoon, and it can really live up to its penultimate lyric of being totally insane-y. The classic series is overflowing with traditional cartoon mayhem, and the reboot writers seem to be enjoying the Flintstones gummies that come in their perks. With hundreds of segments to choose from spanning seven seasons, I just know this is going to be a fun comment section. But there's one episode from season two of the original series that I can't stop thinking about. It's absurd. The Good Feathers segment, Pigeon on the Roof. Why this of all possible contenders? It's just the Good Feathers doing another musical parody. Just look at the ingredients for this premise. You've got Looney Tune pigeons inspired by Goodfellas, a true crime drama, taking on Fiddler on the Roof, a musical about Jewish culture and prejudice. These things were never spoken in the same sentence before 1994. Maybe outside of Alcatraz. There's no way you can see this pitch and not want to see how it plays out. A kid probably wouldn't mind seeing the cartoon no matter what, but pitch it to someone who's seen Goodfellas and Fiddler on the Roof and watch them cry. You have to see Fiddler on the Roof first to even get a lick of context for what's happening. I'd recommend the book or a stage production. The movie's fine, but it has one too many omissions to be the definitive story. And by this point, the absurdity of them turning Goodfellas into a kid's cartoon had waned, since they were a means to spoof older media that 90s kids wouldn't immediately get. Like West Side Story, Raging Bull, and the 1971 Spaghetti Western, The Good, The Bad, and The Hiccups. Still, Fiddler on the Roof is a tall order, and what Pigeon on the Roof delivers is the most baffling parody of anything I've ever seen. It's a peachy day in Burbank, New York, with all the feathers singing Scorsese, their parody of tradition. Scorsese, Scorsese, Scorsese. I guess perching on the Martin Scorsese statue is like a tradition to them, and Squid says that without the statue, they're better off as pigeons on a roof. Cut to this poor extra dying. Seriously, chimneys can be fatal for pigeons. After this, the Good Feathers catch up with the Girl Feathers, who reveal their shared desire to marry and become egg hatchers, leading into their take on Matchmaker Matchmaker. Egg hatcher, egg hatcher, I wanna push. The setup for Egg Hatcher, Egg Hatcher is completely inverted. Instead of being trapped in a suffocating tradition like Tevia's daughters, the Girl Feathers are in complete control of who they want to marry and have kids with. And having been their boyfriends for quite a while now, the Good Feathers, of course, <laughs> scream and run away. So things have already seriously diverged from the original stories into a more standard romantic conflict of the goods not being ready to get married. But before the arrangements can begin, the god pigeon pranks them for kicks, starting a brief subplot where Pesto is inspired to become the new god pigeon. He then sings about what he'd do if he were the god pigeon, along with some Italian things. If I were the god pigeon, cooey 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 fettuccine cream sauce parmesan. It's not a bad number, but I'm just sitting here wondering what Topol would have thought of this. And more broadly, what did Joe Pesci think of Pesto? Was he amused? Frustrated? Terrified? All three? Maybe I'll do a little de ta and take over the flock. Well, this plot got a lot more interesting. Just in time for Kiki to sneak a proposal out of him through reverse psychology. Please, Pesto. I don't want to marry you. Oh, yes, you do. I do not. That's it. You do want to marry me, and you will marry me. Okay. And that's final. Now, I think this is a good joke. Later that night, Pesto tells the guys about a dream he's had. Yeah, they had to do this song. It's the best part. In the dream, they're in a graveyard and visited by the Grateful Dead who think Pesto's the God Pigeon. A feather on your head, cuckoo quack, cuckoo quack. We are the Grateful Dead, cuckoo quack, cuckoo quack. They replaced Mozeltoff, Mozeltoff with cuckoo quack, cuckoo quack. How did this not get an Emmy? Then the real God Pigeon emerges as a ghost and terrorizes them. So this is telling me Pesto was seriously considering assassinating him. I wouldn't put it past him. But they wake up and bump into the God Pigeon, and Pesto gives up his plans while accelerating some preteen viewer's personal desires. I do like the nightcap they give him, it's cute. The next morning, Squid makes a move on Sasha while she's taking a bath, and they sing a song that ends with Squid complaining that she's too old for him. Even though you are middle-aged. That's it! Are you saying I'm old? Go ahead. Do you see why I think he likes Pesto more? Well, maybe he thinks you're cute, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> cute? You think I'm cute? Your antlers look cute, Pesto. I'm 
right, that's it. And finally, Bobby and Lana hook up. And what do you know, it seems like they actually love each other. So those fears of tradition being broken in the original are now replaced by easily the most stable and logical relationship of all. So what's at stake? How do they lose their home? Well, out of nowhere, the Martin Scorsese statue was hauled away and replaced with one of Regis Philbin. Angered, all the pigeons sing a song about how much they hate Regis and Kathy Lee and move to a rooftop. Regis Philbin, Regis Philbin, on TV with Kathy Lee, Regis Philbin. Yeah, I totally understand how a statue of Regis Philbin can take the place of a Russian upheaval in exile of a Jewish village. This adaptation is so bonkers that they had to have Pesto complain about it in an outro. Would someone please explain what that was all about? That had to be the most confusing, mixed up, cockamamie script I've ever read in my entire freaking life! I'm the best thing is, this was made for West Side Pigeons. You can tell because of the different animation and how it does a song from that musical. But chances are, this episode ended up being so confusing that they decided to repurpose the song for this one. And I can see why. Pigeon on the Roof is chaos if you don't know what's going on, and it's chaos if you do know what's going on. But the gist of the story is that now the girl feathers are engaged with the good feathers, so where does that lead them? Into the abyss, they never appear again. There's a couple potential reasons for why they vanished. For one thing, cartoons didn't usually have continuity back in these days, so it would have been pointless to follow up on the developments made here. Another is simply a changing writer's room. The Good Feathers made less appearances in the Kids WB seasons due to their head writer, Deanna Oliver, leaving after season 2. What's even stranger about their vague relationship status is that Sasha had an egg in an earlier episode with 3 You Get Egg Roll, meaning Squit's either a father or a cuckold. I accept neither possibility. What a you see, these are the big questions Pigeon on the Roof creates. They were hardly able to cram a 3 hour play into a 9 minute cartoon and it shows, but I love it. I absolutely love it. Deanna, wherever you are, you captivated me. I can't really call it a guilty pleasure because the songs and animation are still great, but this script captivates me due to how much it fumbles the ball. Every line and every decision a character makes is a mystery. I wanna make it clear this episode amuses me more than it entertains me. To entertain me, it has to earn its value through mindful writing and jokes. This amuses me because I find all the decisions it makes to be really funny. I don't know if it's offensive to the Jewish community, taking this already watered down retelling and adding real life gangsters turned cartoon birds. I guess there's too many degrees of separation for this to tread on its inspirations. Check it out again if you haven't seen it in a while. Know the history, know the context, and you'll understand why I think this is the weirdest Animaniacs episode of all time. And stay cool. That's it!